holiday season is here. A time for family-friendly feel-good movies and mass marketing in the hopes that you'll spend your hard-earned money on stuff you don't need. But what happens when those two things combine? Well, in the late 80s, we got our answer. Now everyone knows that lately Universal Pictures and Nintendo have been collaborating on a lot of things, most notably Super Nintendo World being built in multiple Universal theme parks and Illumination Pictures working on an animated Super Mario Bros. movie to hopefully make us all forget about the live-action one we got 25 years ago. But did you know this is far from the first time Nintendo and Universal Pictures have joined forces to make something? It's true, they came together to create a family-friendly film that was also a mass marketing campaign! I've got a bad feeling about this. Hey! Mario! Quit eating the tree! Such a primitive beast eating fake snow. Not like us higher evolved felines. You mean the felines that ate all the stringed popcorn last year? Okay? At the time of Nintendo's premier gaming console, the Nintendo Entertainment System, the Big N was already experimenting with technology that would become standard in the Nintendo Wii. Duck Hunt was their first attempt at pointer controls, and then they launched their first attempt at motion controls simply called the Power Glove. It was supposed to basically function like a Wii Remote, except you wore it on your hand. It had motion controls and buttons all built in. Nintendo wanted to hype up this product, so when they put their heads together with Universal Pictures, they came up with a movie called The Wizard. This flick was released on December 15, 1989, precisely 29 years ago to this very day. It features the Power Glove quite prominently, even having Fred Savage wear it on the poster. It was pretty clear that this film was made to get kids to want to buy not only more Nintendo games, but specifically this new device. Did it work? Did they sacrifice a good story in the process? Let's take a look. The film has a pretty depressing opening as we see a little boy named Jimmy Woods out on his own trying to get to California, but no one quite knows why. What we do know is that Jimmy is emotionally distraught from his sister drowning two years earlier. The tragedy left Jimmy withdrawn from other people. Apparently his running away is a repeated occurrence, so his wonderful stepfather Bateman comes up with a plan. We're thinking about uh, putting him into an institution. Oh yeah, that's great. A little boy loses his sister and the solution is to send him off to a mental institution. Father of the year right here! Meanwhile, Jimmy's birth father, Sam, played by Bo Bridges and his eyebrows, is struggling to raise Jimmy's two older brothers while running a business and coping with being divorced. So far, a decent setup for a dramatic film. Real conflict, a tragic past, everyone's arguing. It looks like an Oscar bait film. At first glance... Corey, played by Fred Savage, or that kid from The Princess Bride, gets fed up with his brother and dad arguing all the time, so he decides to sneak out to bust Jimmy out of the mental home, adding even more to the 80s movie trend of teaching kids that it's perfectly normal to sneak out of your house. And as you can see, the security at this home is just airtight, a real Fort Knox kind of place where a 12-year-old can sneak in, grab an 8-year-old, and sneak out in broad daylight and no one notices. And their first ride is... in the back of a hostess cake truck. And don't worry, we're still in typical product placement level here. It's gonna get way more blatant than this. Of course, it's not long before all the parents figure out what happens, so Bateman and Christine, Sam's ex-wife, hire professional bounty hunter Mr. Putnam. I think I recognize that guy, actually. Was he on an episode of Datelines to Catch a Predator? No? Must have been from that news report about a prisoner who killed his inmate and ate his brain. That's not even a joke. I swear, there was a real report of that, and the dude looks just like that. Are you sure that's not the same guy? I make my money by bringing kids in, and I don't make it if someone else brings a kid in first. To... Never mind, must have been that To Catch a Predator episode after all. During Jimmy and Corey's journey, Corey discovers that his brother got a super high score on Double Dragon. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen, 15 minutes into the movie and we have our first video game product plug. Well, it's kind of a plot device as it introduces Haley, a girl who bets her bus ticket that Jimmy can't beat her score, which he does. But the bus leaves while Haley and Corey fight over the ticket, so, so much for that. So after being so amazed by Jimmy's skills in video games... He's a wizard! Roll credits! Haley proposes that they all make their way to a video game contest in LA. She believes that Jimmy winning the contest will not only make them 50 grand richer, but more importantly prove that he doesn't need to stay in a mental home, thus turning a dramatic film about tragedy into a movie about playing video games. Pedal Putnam continues his search, but wants to make sure he gets paid for it. So instead of working with the father who searches for the kids on his own, as many parents would want to do, he does this! <laughs> Asshole. Fuck you, asshole. Oh, asshole. 
tell me this greedy shithead gets his ass kicked. It's very hot. <laughs> this is a professional matter. Yeah. Oh, well, that works for an 80s movie. Oh god, is he gonna? Yep, he's spear throwing a shovel at Pedo Man. This is Sparta! Well, our three heroes run into some trouble of their own, as the truckers they hitched a ride with suddenly throw them out and take some of their money when they overhear that they have $100 between them. I'm not even making this up. Two grown ass men with jobs suddenly become assholes when they find out kids have $100. Moral this scene being don't hitchhike, or if you must, don't broadcast how much cash you've got on you because people suck. But the kids start to recover by making bets with more grown men that Jimmy can beat them in video games. <laughs> Go on! At some point, the group rests at a junkyard, giving a chance for Corey and Haley to have some character development dialogue. I don't get scared. Never. <laughs> okay, okay, that is my favorite part of the movie so far. No words, no screaming, she just decks his face right into the wall. Never. Welcome, punch! But soon, after having more success, they come face to face with a typical 80s villain, a blonde white boy with thuggish white boy friends. Of course! This is Lucas, another master of video games who decides to show our heroes just how powerful he is. Oh my god, that's it! What we've all come to see! Kids, if you want to be a badass like Lucas, buy the power glove! Seriously, this reveal is so dramatic, they're trying to make this look like the Holy Grail or something. Lucas uses it like a steering wheel, but as we know, this type of motion control wouldn't be perfected until a good 15 or 20 years later. So if we want to be more accurate, we would just show this part that became a famous meme. It's so bad. There you go. Yeah, well, uh, just keep your power gloves off her, pal, huh? But this display of power shatters Jimmy's confidence. Actually, maybe it was the kids beating the shit out of them for money. More fun content to show your kids. At the same time, we get even more Nintendo product placement when older brother Nick finds Corey's NES in the back of their truck of all places. This leads to Nick playing Super Mario Bros. 2 and Sam playing Ninja Turtles. But maybe it's just what he needed to get the courage to seek some brutal revenge on Pedo Man Putnam. <laughs> the kids then arrive in Vegas Junior, by which I mean Reno, to win some gambling money with the help of Haley's trucker friend, uh, Spanky. This is immediately followed by the first time I've seen an 80s montage all about video games. But oh no! Pedo Man has caught up to them! What do we do now? He touched my breast! Huh. Brilliant strategy. He looks a type, as I've been saying, and he's got a helpless child in his arms at that moment. Nice thinking, Haley. Unfortunately, it just buys them time because the next day he kidnaps Jimmy right from Haley's home, forcefully throwing him into the back of his car, the pedo vibes growing stronger by the scene. But Haley gets more of her trucker friends to stop him in his tracks. So you touched her breasts, huh? Normally I'd knock this, but clearly it works. With the gang all back together, it's time to head for LA. And where is the contest being held, you ask? Well, obviously, in Universal Studios Hollywood! You get a product plug! You get a product plug! Everyone gets a product plug! They make their way into the contest where everyone is excited to be there, especially the guys running this show. Move it! Move it! Move it! Last and final round. I'm up here, my little beauties. I think we found the ultimate esports fans here. After Jimmy makes it to the finals, the host says the finalists will play a whole new game in 15 minutes. Just enough time for Putnam and the kids to have a chase scene on the backlot tour causing all sorts of chaos. Please sit down and have fun! Just, just sit down and have fun, damn it! I wonder how many tour guides have wanted to yell that at unruly guests. Luckily, Jimmy makes it back to the stage at the last second when the host reveals that the new game is... Super Mario Brothers 3! This is exactly what you think it is. Nintendo revealed Super Mario Bros. 3 with a theatrical film. It's probably the only time Nintendo has done this. I will say this though, Mario 3 did make a big splash to Nintendo fandom when it came out, so maybe it's a bit poetic to see all these people get so hyped about watching these kids play the game. Okay, it's still weird. Even weirder to see a movie where main characters are actually commentating on what's happening. But after a gameplay session more dramatic than Twitch streamers, Jimmy gets the big win. Hooray! The good guys win! Movie over! 
Oh, except that there was this plot from the beginning that we almost forgot about with all the competitive gaming plot lines. It's at this dinosaur museum that Jimmy finally reveals why he wanted to come out to Cali. It was to leave a collection of photos of his sister at one of her favorite spots as a tribute to her. It's a pretty touching moment shared by all the main characters. And with Jimmy's actual goal accomplished, the movie concludes. So that was Universal Pictures' film The Wizard, a pretty obvious marketing movie made mostly to sell NES Power Gloves and advertise a new Mario game. But did it work at least? Well, for the Power Glove... No. Not at all. The Power Glove came out the same year as this movie and only ever worked with two unsuccessful games. It was also criticized for being difficult to use and having very inaccurate motion controls. The Power Glove sold 1 million units before it being discontinued the very next year. So, mission not accomplished with advertising this failed device. As for advertising Super Mario Bros. 3 and the Universal Backlot Tour, well, the tour was very popular anyway, and Nintendo could have done a much simpler reveal for Mario 3. You didn't need a movie to get you interested in them. But as far as this movie goes, most people outside some 80s kids have forgotten all about it. Maybe if the plot was rewritten to not put attention on heavy product placement, it could have been a heartwarming film about a boy helping his little brother overcome his PTSD and Haley overcoming her problems. The competitive gaming plot seemed to be at odds with the childhood problems plot. One kind of makes you forget about the other. So most people only know this movie for the birth of the It's So Bad meme. Leave it to the internet to bring back a forgotten film with a picture and subtitles. So instead of watching this, why not watch one of the many Christmas classics like Charlie Brown or play some Super Mario Party? Or just spend some time with your family. Whether that includes fancy dinners, caroling, or drunken holiday fights, just enjoy this festive time of year. As for me, I'm going to enjoy the holiday season the only way I know how. <laughs>